With my experience and your ambitions, let's navigate the world of business, making informed choices and capitalizing on every opportunity. Welcome to Profit or Pitfall. This is episode four. And um, after watching uh, a few podcasts this week and getting some good feedback from our previous episode where we shared uh, the details on an industrial property that we're looking to purchase, one of the questions that came back was, how did you put your diligence together? And so the next few episodes that I'm going to do is actually kind of walk you through uh, from soup to nuts, uh, from beginning to end, kind of how we start and look at a transaction and get to the owner, uh, get their attention and show them that we are for real. And so today's episode is is writing an LOI for commercial real estate. And I think this is a, a really important part of creating understanding when you are beginning to build relationships with brokers, with owners, uh, with financiers, because if you can show that you are serious, that you know how to remove obstacles, you will find success when it comes to buying a building. And so what is an LOI? Well, you, I'm sure you may have heard it, but for those who haven't, an LOI can be called a letter of intent. Sometimes it's called a LOU, L-O-U, letter of understanding, memorandum of understanding, or um, you know, just different ways that people call it. And so people often wonder, well, why don't you just write a PSA or a purchase and sale agreement? And that can be a very complex and time consuming part of the business. And I think that that's if you're in this business, that is something you'll begin to understand, which is one, uh, real estate is very time consuming. This is, you're not buying a house. Uh, this isn't your dream home. This is a very complex acquisition uh, in terms of doing the diligence that's required to make sure that uh, whatever you think your box is, you know, we talk about uh, being a fiduciary. Um, and this is in terms of when you're going out there and you're talking to investors or you're talking to friends and family saying, hey, you know, I've found this property. Let me tell you why I think it's a good deal. Um, you want to make sure that you're making the most use of your time. And so understanding that it's calm, it's time consuming, that it's complex and it can be very expensive. Um, once you're bringing in an attorney and that clock starts ticking, um, I think attorneys are at a very, very important part of this process. But you also have to respect your budget and people's time to make sure that you're not spending money when you don't need to. And so when you have a uh, an LOI, you want to have a meeting of the minds with two to three pages versus 20. And so here are some some things that you can basically uh, take some time to, to make sure that you're understanding. I think it helps to, it really gives you the ability to focus on, okay, what am I doing here? What am I buying? Do I understand what I'm buying? And so First thing is to really identify who the seller or the buyer are. And I, just so you know, the way I'm writing this, this could also be for a lease. So if you're a business owner and you're trying to get a new space for your for your business because you're growing, uh, think about this as well in terms of your LOI when you're working with your broker. So you wanna identify who the seller is or the buyer, You know, yourself as the buyer. Do you have an entity in place? If not, is that to be determined? Um, and then, you begin having contact information and you really want to identify those with authority. I can't tell you how many times I've walked into deals where you pull a property profile, you go to this, you know, state of California or whatever state you're looking at, the secretary of state, and you pull down the business information and you say, oh, it's this person. And then you come to find out that that person has no authority whatsoever because there's two or three people above him or her that have to make the decision and really begins to under, you'll really find out who the decision makers are in the room to make sure that you're dealing with the right people once you engage them with this letter of intent. Now, this may seem obvious, the, the property address, but you know, sometimes what you'll see on the street is not what is actually recorded at the county level. So this is a good time for you to understand what you're buying. What are the, what are the parcel numbers? What is the description? If the flyer says that it's a six acre property, but when you actually look at the property profile, you see that it's four and a half, where'd the other one and a half go? Because that's gonna affect your value when you time, when you spend money on going to appraisal to finance your project. And then looking at the financials, you know, you want to really understand the income and the finance, excuse me, the expenses 
and the real NOI. Um, this really helps for you to understand, okay, what is missing here? What am I, you know, a broker's job is to market the property. So they're going to make sure they try to put the property in the best light. You have to find those warts. And so sometimes really kind of saying, okay, this is what I understand is what you're selling. And the seller may say, oh, well, no, there's a, there's a problem here. Or you know what? There's something you haven't thought about. And then when you haven't taken the time to look at the rent roll, you're under, really taking time to see what kind of leases they are. Are they triple net? Are they modified gross? What kind of expenses are you really taking on as a property owner once you buy the property? And the next thing would be to you list your purchase price or if you're doing a lease, what the lease terms would look like. And then you would put, you know, some target dates. You know, what does your due diligence period look like? What are your financing contingencies? Can you buy this cash? Do you have... Do you have a line of credit on the back end ready to help you out to take out and regain some of that equity that you're putting in the deal so that you can make your deal or offer as attractive as possible? What does inspection need to look like? You know, what are the concerns that you have? What are your target dates for the closing of escrow? How are you going to split closing costs? And of course, when does the date of possession look like? You know, maybe um, there are some things that happen need to happen first in terms of you actually taking possession of the property versus you actually closing at escrow at the end of you know, the 31st of the month. And more, and this is something that I really find is important is you're, build, you're building these relationships with these brokers. You need to make sure that you're identifying both sides. Take care of your brokers, list the commissions, the splits. There's no misunderstanding about who's getting paid and where. And of course, the nice thing about the LOI is that you can have some disclaimers, which is one is it's non-binding. You're just really trying to create a meeting of the minds so that the seller understands like, hey, I'm serious about doing this. I'm showing you my commitment. Um, let's make sure that when we get to going into a purchase and sale agreement that we're on the same page, right? Are there any preconditions to approval? Like I told you earlier, when you identify the owner, are there other shareholders, other owners to consider? All right, you want to talk about about confidentiality if they're sharing financial information with you that you're you're showing them hey i know that this is sensitive and i'm agreeing to make sure that we're keeping this under wraps until we're ready to get to the psa or actually probably until the close of the transaction when is the ex you know you want to make sure that the the loi expires you want to kind of put that little bit of a time contingency so that the seller knows hey this guy's serious he needs an answer by next wednesday next friday let's make sure we get back to him or her and so, like I mentioned, this really shows your commitment. You're taking the time to do a little bit of brain damage and kind of understand the transaction. And you're creating a guiding document for the PSA. Once you're ready, once you finish this LOI and there's an agreement, now you have a, a, a good document to guide you and your broker to write the actual purchase and sale agreement. Or if you're going to have your attorney step in and help with that, that really makes sure that you're removing a lot of the obstacles. And I find this very, you know, great is that you don't have to put any earnest money down yet, right? You're not having to open escrow and move money around. You're really making sure that this is a deal that's going to work and you're not spending the money that you don't have to. So that are those are the basics of an LOI. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, next week, we'll probably go into a little bit of the due diligence, kind of the things that you need to look at, third-party reports, and uh, we'll go from there. If you have a deal that you would like for us to take a look at, uh, choose the link here and there's a submission form for you to take a look at. Fill in the information as best as you can and that way we can take a look and maybe your deal will be on the next episode of Profit or Pitfall. Thanks for joining us.